Oh, God, help me. Mm. Wasn't planning on coming back, been going through a whole lot. God bless you. God keep you. Um, I didn't go to work today. I mean, the job is stressful. Uh, I want to say God bless you and keep you. Uh, it's been a gloomy day here in Louisville, but God bless you and keep you. I've been fighting not to say something until it's getting a, it's made a knot in my stomach, you know, and I, I've, I've gotten sick to my stomach, and, and so i got to say what's on my mind. <laughs> um, it's not, not, it's, let me preface this, I don't hate, uh, I don't hate people from other countries, I don't hate Mexicans and uh, 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 Hispanics and Cubans and all that. But I dislike a few, and I don't like what I've seen them do, and I don't like the things that they have done to me. So, uh, ooh, Lord Jesus. Mm. I went to church today, and uh, thank God, pastor's out of town, but he sent Reverend Timothy and um, Reverend uh, Tim Finley. And I ain't lying. I mean, he preached. He talked about keep on building. And I was like, Bill what? <laughs> I'm looking at the lady like, Bill what? And so anyway, he's talking about Nehemiah when he built the building and stuff like that. And all the opposition that came against him when he was building the building. And the opposition that comes against people when they have a vision, when they have a dream, or when God tells them to do something. You know, people, uh, things come to you. You know, a lot of stuff happens. You know, dis distractions come. And so I was like, wow, you know, I needed this. And, you know, he was talking about being afraid. He was talking about going out and God be for you, who could be against you, and all this type of stuff. And mainly he scared me when he was talking about how some people can uh, some people can be nice to you and they can be the devil, you know. And I was like, wow, <laughs> you know. I was like, okay, you know, because I think I might have one of them. I I'm praying it's not, but, hmm. One person, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's one or two people still around, you know, then coming in my life a little frequent. One of them I already, kind of, I already called out. It's a chick. One chick I called out playing games like she going to help me. So I pro it's probably her he was speaking to. The spirit was letting me know. Mm, the spirit. Anyway, <laughs> whew, the Lord Jesus help me. Not my will, but that will be done. Like I said, I'm, I, I get tired. I'm going to preface this. I just, had, I just got some eating. I had me some uh, chicken. Al I had turkey Alfredo. Hey, I didn't have the broccoli, but I got the turkey and Alfredo and my little bow tie noodles. Uh, uh, my, thought, my, my head had been hurting for the last three days, and I know it was stress. I thought it was just my allergies, but it was stress. I'm uh, dealing with this job. And, um, uh, I mean, so much I want to tell you about it. At first, I wasn't going to tell you some things, but now, you know, I got pissed off. And really, I backed away, too. I got to take a little drink. Delicious. Caffeine free. I backed away from talking, and I was going to back away from video, back away from my life for a minute. Because I had heard this lady preach Sunday. And she was talking about take a rest, and I was like, I really need to take a rest because I knew if I made a video, I would cuss. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. I don't have time to play. You know, life's too short to be talking half talk. But I knew I would cuss because I, I've been getting really frustrated. I mean, I'm to the point where, you know, I understand when people give up. But in the process, I was listening to, um, I was listening to this pastor. Uh, from a church here in Louisville, I was watching it on YouTube, and he was talking about a lot of pastors that had killed themselves. I'm not calling myself a pastor. You know, I haven't been ordained, so I'm not a pastor. So, <laughs> I could cut. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, you know, he was talking about a whole lot of pastors that killed them, had killed themselves, you know, and a lot of them was black. They had murdered, you know, killed themselves and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? I had heard about it, but he was talking about the statistics of how they taking on everybody else's problems and they holding a lot of stuff in. And when you hold in stuff that you need to let out verbally, uh, in other ways, it takes 
you know, really telling somebody your thoughts or doing some things that you really have a desire to do, that can make you sick, physically sick and mentally sick. So he was talking about mental illness too. And a lot of pastors, you know, end up suffering with mental illness and things because they're, they're up under a lot of pressure. And then people thinking that, oh, well, he's preaching. How can he be mentally ill? How can he succumb to mental illness? How can this person, he or she, can succumb to that? Or how can he, he or she consider suicide when they're a person of God and God tells them not to commit suicide? But, whoa, back up. You know, you don't know what it's like to walk in a person's shoes. Uh, don't judge. Don't judge nobody. Only God can judge. So you don't know what it's like. So anyway, with that being said, it's about to go down. <laughs> yeah, so like I'm at work the other day, you know, Monday. We're really since I've been there. I've been there like going on six days. So like I said, at first when I was working with the one chick, evil, she going to take the screw out. She can't speak English. She claimed at first, but she ended up saying something when I was telling you about so anyway, since she was from Yugoslavia, anyway, she going to turn around and uh, she had took, taken the screw out. So anyway, me and the people that came in, we ended up talking and it was like, uh, it's big guy. Greg was telling me the other day, uh, Tuesday, he said, at work, he said, yeah. He said, uh, she going to say she going to out at me. You know, I didn't do my work right. So I'm like, wow. You know, so I didn't get another opportunity to talk to him. Why? Because he had to leave in an ambulance. He had to go to immediately to the hospital, rather. You know, they said he had to go to the hospital, you know, because he was sick. So, mm, mm, mm. Man. Lord Jesus, I get it. I, I mean, it's me, the dude Greg, and, and Greg hangs with this white guy. Greg, and I believe the white guy, I know the white guy, he stays in a, a halfway house. A halfway house is a house that is a house, and it has numerous rooms in it, and you rent a room from a person. It's almost like an inn, like a day's inn. It's something like a hotel for people that can't comprehend and people that are, are not fluent. I'm going to get to this about people not speaking English and people not speaking Spanish. I'm going to get into that a little deep. Uh... So anyway, when Greg had to go to the hospital, leave work and go to the hospital, the white guy went with him. So both of them missed their money and they really need a job. So what I want to say is this. While I was working, when it was getting close to the end of the day, the little, this little white chick, she ended up doing the older lady. But besides her doing stuff, the end of the day, you're going to give me three sheets of paperwork in 15 minutes. There's no way all of it could be done. What I do is, it's a man's job, and I don't care, you can be feminine and whatever you want to do, you can do it all day, every day. And like I said, if I cuss, God bless my heart and all my part, because that's why I didn't want to get out here, because I got a whole lot going on, and I don't need this in my life. And this is what I want to say. Not only do I not need this in my life, I'm not going to tolerate it in my life. And I don't, I'm not going to tolerate when you hurt other people. Because you're mean and you're evil. Like I said, when I work the land, each time I work the land, the people that can't speak English, they're going to take it back up the land intentionally. Knowing it's a slow area, you know you stop and you talk all the time, but you intentionally do things to harm people, to run the new people out, because you call it job security. I don't call it job security. I call it being pure evil. You were evil, and nothing good will ever become of you. I don't care where you think you work. I don't care how many times you sit at the table, and you think you're bullying, and you're running some stuff. No, you're not. God runs this universe, and I don't know what God you serve when you were trying to compliment me on my shirt, talking about, oh, Jesus, he's the one. No, he's not the one. Not the one on my shirt is not the one for you. The God that I serve, he died on the cross to save people, to bring people to him so people would change so people would be nice to one another, regardless of the color of their skin. That's the God I serve. That's the Jesus, the Jesus that I serve. Yeah, I know a little Spanish, and I know how to learn Spanish. While you running your mouth, thinking I don't know what you're talking about. What irks me more than anything that got me totally pissed off. Lord Jesus, please don't let me cuss. What really got me pissed off is that man sick. 
That black man, he's sick. The man is a diabetic. First of all, all of a sudden, you question his work when y'all see that he's doing good and he's getting compliments about how good he's doing. So y'all see he's trying to secure a permanent position. So now you want to run him out because y'all supervisors and stuff around there. That's wrong. And it's idiotic. And you are not better than him. He's not better than you. You're really equal. But you think you're better. You think you, you, I, you think you're doing evil. And because you did evil, let me tell you what your evil did. Because you set that man up and you stressed that man out, and there's no telling, you got him running around, you probably moved the products out of the place, so the man was running around because he was already sweating, and he's a big guy, and you caused that man to go to the hospital, and he's a black man, I'm a black woman, he's my brother, you took and hurt him, we was hurt before cockroaches was hurt. Nigga, we'll still be here after that. And you thinking you harming him and you thinking you gonna prosper by that? No, you're not. No, you're not. You watch what God do to you. I, like I said, don't ever t try to fix something and say, oh, she gonna come back now, boo boo. I ain't never gotta touch it. And by the way, I see where a lot of you hate Susan and all of y'all, you wanna follow me because of the things I'm saying. More power to you. That's why I accepted you following me. You can follow me. You can follow me and you can step to me like you do at work. Like I said, I don't say nothing to you at work. I ain't got nothing to say to you. I never have anything to say to you. As long as you want to perpetrate some evilness on black people, I don't have nothing to say to you. And as a matter of fact, that one white guy, he was flushed in the face. Flushed means that he was turning red because he was, he's a heavy man. And you had him running around. You putting people, you, 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 you devil, you, you setting people up for failure. You disfiguring the work. We work. We make cabinets for a company. That's where I work. I make cabinets like Jesus did carpentry, new dimension carpentry. So the carving with a chisel. What we do is they was I, at one point I was stapling stuff. They stapled the the uh, kitchen cabinets together. And then what I'm doing now is I take a big old dolly like thing and I go around and I get all the doors that go on the cabinet and put them on a rack. And that rack is heavy as I don't know what. You got to do that. It's a man's job. It's not no woman. It's not for me. It's woman. This woman, now, nah, yeah, back in the day I used to be whatever a man can do, yeah, which was really not everything. But now, nah, that's a man's job. I don't care what you say. You want to be bull back and hung over. That's why the veins is popping out of hand for y'all legs down there. Do you. Do you. I plan on retiring early and going to Paris. And when I go to Paris, I want to be able to skip jump and I'm going to move around and I want to dance like I did when I was 16 years old. And I will. I'm not going there with a hump in my back, bent all over, eyes all bent over, hair all gray and stuff like that, looking toe up from the floor up. No, I'm not. But since you want to make that your business, you do that. Because I don't have to tolerate you. Boo boo, let me tell you something. Just like I got that job, I can get another one. So you're not sabotaging me. But remember this, like my mama said, when you dig a ditch for one person, you better make sure you're going to fall in it yourself. So you better be prepared for that. Make sure you throw some mattresses on there to cushion that damn file because that's what you're going to fall in anytime you do evil like that. And you better hope that man don't die from that because he could die from that. Being evil and nasty, having somebody suffer so you can secure a job making ten dollars and forty five cents. Really, there is no price you can put on harming somebody. That's nasty and you're evil. Woo! What goes around comes around. I said it back in the day when I was drinking, and I'm saying it right now. I'm fifty five years old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor begging for bread. Boo boo! You believe that? Why you thinking you securing that job? Why you thinking you gonna always be there? That's why the other lady that was nasty to me, that trained me, which I ended up finding out, she trained me Monday. I found out Tuesday that the stuff she was training me on was totally wrong. Rushing and stuff, trying to put stuff out of the car, claiming it had to be turned a certain way. That's why she boo-booed all over herself in the bathroom and the janitor had to go, the female janitor had to go clean the duty off of the floor. Some of them were still on the floor later on. Then you had to go home and come back. God don't like ugly. Just like she duty on herself, you're going to duty on yourself too. Duty and out of your mouth. Duty and out of all parts of your Ephesus because you're nasty. You're nasty and you're angry. And when I say duty, it's not always just feces. It's pouring out anything that comes out of your mouth. It's vomit. It's impure and it's evil. And God 
does not like evil. God don't like it when you hurt people. God don't like it when you think you're running and you own something because you don't own and you don't work nothing. Your name's not on the, on the lease of that building. I'm quite sure they don't own the building. So your name's not on it. You just working there. You could get fired just like anybody else, honey. All that evil you're doing, well, you, you're going to look real stupid when you get fired. And then you look at it and say, oh, darn, I, 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 did, I sabotaged that man's work and that man died. Or that man sitting in the hospital. I made that man miss, what was it, what we made? 1045, we doing eight hours a day. What, like 80-something dollars you made that man lose. And they pay like 80 to 100 dollars to stay in a room. And you cause harm to that man, not only to his body, his physical body, but you cause harm to his money. Just like you did, man, when you play them games. But I'm used to you being nasty. Like I said, I had some Mexicans take and put a monkey on the door. But you know what happened with that? And I'm going to end up showing pictures about that because I was trying to be nice. But now you can't be nice to people that choose to be nasty. Like I said, we black people, we the first people, we're going to always be around. You think you're secure in the job that you in? Yeah. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. I know how you are. What would you do for a Klondike box? Honey, <laughs> well, I've seen it. Didn't you hear me? I done been working out my life. I already know what you're doing and what they're looking at for you to secure, secure, secure your position. But honey, just like you secured it, it's always somebody going to come with something a little better than what you got. Thinking you spread your legs and you holding the position. Boo boo. Check the record. Get on YouTube. Get on Lifetime, honey. See how long that lasts. Because what you spread for, baby, there's somebody else that will do the same thing. And let me tell you something, honey, about America. Let me tell you something about America. It don't always have to be a woman. <laughs> yeah. It's some men out here that can make you <coughs> shut your legs. Yeah. So don't get it twisted thinking that you 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 a goddess. You up in there. You want to put your stuff all on the table like you own something. Because y'all want to sit together. Yeah, I like, I admire your little family thing. But I don't admire anybody that's evil that would take and perpetrate some harm against a person. You evil and you nasty. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, the job is a man's job. You know, anytime you got to keep asking somebody to help you live. And then you nasty. Uh, man, I'm telling you dirt. And then I'm talking to my friend. This dude, he going to tell me, ooh. I said, I'm, oh, I said they tripping on a job. He going to hurry up and say to me, ooh, you have a problem on this job too? Excuse me. As God probably told me, I needed to take that bill because God keeping me from, you know what I wanted to tell him, don't you? <laughs> a little more praying. He probably won't be my friend no more. <laughs> Believe that because I cut you loose. Like Sam uh, Sam Smith, he's he at the bottom of my screen right now. He got cold blood. He got two cold blooded songs out. One is called I'm Getting Good and Good Back. And I've been hurt many times in my life in relationships. And it wasn't just the sexual type. I've been hurt in relationships. I've been hurt. And so I learned how to say goodbye. I'm good at saying goodbye real quick. I can say it nice and I can say it bad too. But I'm good at saying goodbye. And then he has another one. Oh my God. If you don't have to get it. If I had the little extra change, I would get it. Uh, he got one pray. But what I love about it, and it makes me think about the people at work. They claim they can't speak English. They want to play them little childish, ignorant games. He says, pray. I think I pray. He said, because everybody finds you at the end, meaning God. Everybody, yeah, when you're on your deathbed, and when you down and you sick in your body, just like you did that black brother, you're going to wish that you knew God. And, and I'm going to say this. This is another thing. People think... And I know y'all hear a lot of preachers tell y'all, oh, if you on your deathbed, you can call on God. God don't want no fake people. God know when you fake. He know when you real and when you fake. Yeah, at the end, just like the grassy. You don't believe in God. You don't talk to all this smack. You don't turn people against God. You don't turn 10 and 15,000 people against God, millions against God, talking about God don't exist. There is no God. There is no Jesus. And then you're going to turn around and be on your deathbed and start talking about, oh, Lord, please take me. Forgive me of my sin. He might spit on you. And that's what he should do. He should spit in your face. 
to turn around and do people wrong and do harm to people and then try to let his name come out of your mouth. You foul and you undeserving and you are unfit human being. You shouldn't even be breathing on this earth to take a hurt a person just to secure yourself in a little bitty job. You would do that. If you would take and harm him like you did that, you would kill him if they offered you $20. And while we on the subject, and then I'm going to bounce off for her because I got stuff to do because I had to run around today and miss a day at work so I could take her some business because somebody is going to want to take and go in my bank account doing some stupid stuff. And I'm in debt up to my wazoo. But here's a hit. And I'm saying this to everybody. For the people, for the people, the women, children, they cannot speak Spanish. There is apps. There are apps. People that are not computer literate. I'm sorry, y'all can't really see it. But anyway, there it is. Come on with it, technology. That's a phone. There are apps. If you want to speak French, if you want to know what a person's saying in French, you download an app. And the app will be French. And then with the person that can't speak, uh, for, for instance, I don't speak uh, Spanish. All I have to do is download an app. And then whatever the person is saying, you take the, uh, your phone and put, you download the app, take your phone and put it in front of that person and whatever they say. You can even carry it around in your pocket and they don't even have to know that you got it. You can take and put it in your pocket and the people that can't speak uh, Spanish, all they got to do is listen to that and then say, talk into it. Uh, 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 see, uno, twice, twice, whatever. And then push a button and it'll tell you what they said, one, two. It'll translate for you is the point I'm making. The same thing for people that speak Spanish and speak all kind of different languages and whatever. All you have to do is download an app and you can put it on your phone and just lay it on the table and whatever they're saying and talking about you or whatever they're saying, you can hear it. And that's what we should do. And while I'm on the subject, when I'm hot, I'm hot. When I'm out, while I'm on this subject, here's something that should should be done. I don't care nothing about that company because the company that I work for, they don't care nothing about their people. They ask you to show concern and come into HR and all that, but until you fix that prejudice and that racial division, you're never going to prosper. And I looked online and, and, and reviewed the company and seen I uh, seen where the company back in 2016, somebody said the same thing, talked about their ethics, and said that they was biased. They're not for the people, for their employees. So anyway, it was 2016, so you're still doing it now. We're almost at the end of 2017. So you not changed. You haven't changed, so I'm not going to change. I, I voiced my opinion and said what I had to say regardless of it. I said what I had to say. I said that you was arrogant and you too aggressive. The people that don't speak, uh, said, claim to not speak English. I wrote it on the paper. And what I put also at the bottom of the paper where the manager was supposed to see it, which I don't know if it was transferred over, but I put that it was an honor to be able to be doing what Jesus did, and that's being a carpenter and making cabins and stuff like that. You know, they didn't have cabins then. Don't get it twisted. But working with wood, you know. But uh, other than that, like I said, that, you know, and, and as for me, I wouldn't hire a person. I don't really care how to, you know, hey, I almost said something. I really don't care how you take it. I would not hire a person if you can't speak English. I wouldn't hire a person if you can't speak it. Because not only is it detrimental to me, it's detrimental to you. Because we're not equal. So why should I socialize with you when we're not equal? I'm not talking about humanism, you know. <laughs> Ooh, sweet Jesus, keep me from cussing. Cut the bull. I'm speaking English and you claiming you don't. I'm, I know you, I'm the one, we got a lot that really can speak English, but we got some of them that really just get told, so broken up. Like the chick I work with, it was so broken up. I messed up because I couldn't understand what she was saying, 40, and then she had to say 40, zero, and all this or that. But she was trying to give her that, even though she still was trying to sabotage in my work and then going back telling them that I messed up. But now you messed up. And I can't understand. Let me say this real quick. How you be on a damn job for three? Hmm. Hmm. Mm -mm. Mm. Lord, 
Lord God, guard my tongue, Lord. Guard my tongue. Guard my tongue. If anything is evil in me, take it out. But anything in that company, I pray, Lord Jesus, have your way, have your will. Anybody in there that want to cause harm, that's sabotaging people, Lord, have your way with them. I can't tell you what to do and how to do people because you know what they are. Is you know how they are, you know who the person is that did the harm to that man. Lord, you get them in the name of Jesus. I pray. How can you be on a job for three years or 12 years and you still messing up on how to put stuff in a slot? Hello, sit down with that. Sit down with that. You don't know what you're doing. If you didn't make mistakes, if it wasn't, wasn't possible for a person to make mistakes, why do y'all have a toolbox? And a thing that takes out staples and stuff like that. So sit down. Trying to make, you take a little th a situation and you make it monumental. And you're evil. And what you do to people and what you did to that man is going to come back on you. At least I hope it do. I hope it be fired. Because you. you're nasty. And another point, like I said, people that can't speak Spanish and people that can't speak English, whatever, and vice versa. However it is, put some apps on your phone so you can speak the language. Then you equal. If I don't know what you're saying and you're, trying to, you're speaking in Spanish talking about run, Janice, run. <laughs> All I'm getting is like, okay, I she's saying my name. I don't know. I see you trying to run, but I don't know. You're trying to tell me. How is, how is, how is it going to benefit us? And vice versa. I'm trying to tell you, you better run. He's coming. He's killing us. He's getting ready to shoot. The monster's coming. They're coming. And you standing there looking at me. I don't speak no English. Don't speak no English. What good is it? We are not equal. If you can't, if we can't communicate with one another, at least fifty percent, it's no good. Working, it's a little bit okay. But when you turn on a full twenty-minute conversation in your language, and I don't know what you're saying, it's disrespect. The same thing with me. If I was to do it to you, it would be disrespectful because I know you would be thinking, "Darn, are they talking about me?" I know in Spanish, Negro is supposed to mean black. So I know you, you slick with how you're going to say that. You know not to say that regardless of whether you speak English or not. Some kind of way they translate, don't say that, and don't say Negro. But it would be disrespectful. You would see it that way. But you don't. You Because you don't care. You don't care. You're only looking out for you. You're only looking out for yourself. And that's what I'm telling black people. The white people look out for themselves. The uh, Cubans, the uh, the Yugoslavians, all of them look out for themselves. And uh, I did cheat. I got to admit, I cheated. I'm telling myself. Because I wanted my nails done. And my nails was tore up. And you know what I'm saying? I got to have a little feminine. Too. You know what I'm saying? I went and paid. I'm going to make sure all my bills were paid to pay, the, to pay the, the debt on the car that got stolen. Like I said, life for me ain't been no crystal star. I got a whole lot going on. And then I'm turning around. I got fired from a job. Then I turned around and blessed and got another job, which I'm trying to figure out. I don't think God really, I don't know. I think he made me, he said, go look in the door and work a day or whatever and then leave. And that's where my prayers are now. God, did you send me here? Whatever. But I'm glad I did go because, like I said, you rude. The people I've been working with is rude. Like I said, rude and evil. Rude and evil. And like I said, I've had so many things happen to me, and then for somebody to turn around, like I said, I, I, I get puzzled on it. But then I have to remember spiritual warfare, you know. It's not making me better, because believe me, I don't want to be here. <laughs> believe that, you know. Just like I didn't want to say some things. Thank God I went to church, and then it empowered me to open my mouth and say something, because I, I didn't want people trying to get on my pages and all this type of, who you hate us, and who, 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 and all of that type of thing. Because if you catch me at the wrong time, I will respond. And it won't be like I'm talking on the video. I will say what I really feel. I will say that. I'll say exactly what I feel. And I'll say it exactly like I want to say it. But like I said, you evil. You some evil people. You some evil people. You know, evil. I just pray that that man is okay. I thank God I did get a telephone number. I pray that both of them are okay. Because the white guy, when I looked in the parking lot that day, he was red. He was saying something, you know, hot, you know. Then you running people around and knowing stuff not there. Just like she did at the end of the day. She going to tell me, you're going to give me three papers, which they were your papers. You're 65, 67 years old. You don't want to retire. Whatever you about, do you. But if you're going to turn around and give me the paper on the slip and then try to say, 
you got to stay here until you finish it, and it's 15 minutes time. It's 15 minutes left, and it's time. What, man? Before I even get time to catch my religion, I said, no, I'm not. And I see she gonna say, yeah. And then she try to smooth it out. Yeah, you need to smooth it out real quick because why would you give, you know, except to be nasty and angry? Why would you give somebody? That's like giving somebody, tell somebody to go build a shed. 15 minutes before it's time to go, they're talking about I was coming over to help me. you 60 some years old, you've been here 12 years, and you can't even remember. Who don't say it, Jen? You've been here 12 years, and you can't still remember the numbers on the card. You still mess up, then try to say, oh, oh, yeah, that's the round one, that's the round one. But then when you got over with the man, which I held my tongue then, when we took it over to land two, you're going to stand there talking long. And like speaking in English, speaking in English, you gonna stand up telling another person they speak English in front of me, basically saying it was my fault that something was messed up on the car. And I'm just looking at. It. I just walked away to give you that little respect because you were sixty. But at the end of the day, when you try to say that I'm gonna have to stay here and I'm gonna stay there until I finish that paper, nah, I ain't got no respect for you. I don't care if you old ass Methuselah. You better get up out of my face with that. Because you nasty and evil too. And if I was that close to death, which ain't nobody going to get up out of this world living. I've never seen it. Let me take that back. What was it? Elijah was called up in the whirlwind and Moses just disappeared or whatever. Yeah. But other than that, <laughs> you're 65 and you're close to death. You shouldn't do evil. <laughs> you should not do evil. Mm -hmm. God said, I'll make your enemy your footstool. And I've seen people one day. And not that they did something to me. I've just seen people be nasty and be evil and cruel to somebody. You turn around the next day, somebody will tell you, you've got to give you the report. And this is what I'm telling you, too. This is how awesome my God is. Jesus Christ said, I know. This is how awesome he is. And I walk with him and I talk with him a mighty long time. And this is without a doubt. Let me tell you this powerful testimony. I have seen him. I've seen people that have been doing people wrong. And turn around. Dead. And God has a way. You be like, darn, you know, in, a, in your mind for blink. Somebody, I wonder what happened to that person. I haven't seen him for a minute. It was a guy. I ain't going to get all of the details, but we had bad terms. And he, we had to go to court. And so anyway, we ended up being cool. After the court thing, we ended up being cool. You know what I'm saying? We smashed all that. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I started seeing him all the time. You know, he was up for a minute. He was working and everything. And he didn't just do, let me take, let me, let me, uh, let me re rephrase that. Let me fix it up. He used to beat women. And he had beat his uh, children's mother, evidently. And she had an EPO out on him or whatever. And he used to intimidate and threaten her by saying he killed people or whatever. Hello. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, let's start with that one. So anyway, he was working. The next thing I know, he wasn't working no more. He lost his place. Then the next thing I know, he was picking up cans and stuff like that, but he was still around. All of a sudden, you know, I didn't see him. And for a blink second, you know, a quick second, I, I was like, I wonder what happened. Lo and behold, I picked up the paper. Who's in it? His obituary. But man, you now remember, he was going down, so he was almost homeless, but God seemed fit to put his obituary in there. Like I said, and I, I feel bad, I, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, we have mended our fences and stuff like that, you know, and, I, and, and with me, as long as you're breathing and you're alive, I don't care if you're picking up cans or picking up duty off the street. I'm just glad to see you. I'm glad you're among the living. But, like I said, I've seen people many times in my life, you know, the one that really messed me up, man. Me and my step-sister, we was together, and we had just seen her daddy come as again. <laughs> again, I had a firebird, and my firebird broke down, and her daddy stopped and helped her. It, this was like a Friday. I think it was like maybe, yeah, it was maybe like a, I think a Thursday or a Friday, somewhere like that. Anyway, he helped me that day get the car, and, you know, he pulled out this big old wad of money, like, you need anything, you know what I'm saying, James, you need that, I'm looking at that money, like, yeah, I'm looking at him, I'm looking at that money, like, hey, anyway, now nah, I'm straight, so anyway, the car started back up, and his daughter was with me, and she said, yeah, daddy, I'm gonna call you tomorrow, whatever, you know, 
I mean, he's a fresh a bit of hair, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he had real straight hair. You know, he had real straight hair. You know, he's my mother's ex, but they got back together. <laughs> the men always would come back to my mother. Hello. <laughs> Mama had a lot of exes that came back to her, and he was one. And uh, he was maybe 60, 60. He, he had hit 65, but he retired early because he used to work at the current journal. But he, anyway. So uh, the next day, we, you know, we woke up and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So we said, we said, and uh, Lita jumped up. She said, she said, Jenny, these are the type of people. I'm talking about real people. I hang around. And uh, Lita said, uh, she said, Jenny, she said, something's wrong. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I said, what? She said, something's wrong. She said, something's wrong. Oh, I got a feeling. She said, something's wrong. She just starts wringing her hands. She's shaking her hands. I said, what is it? What is it? What you going to do? You know, what you need to do? She said, let me call daddy and check. She called somebody first. And then she said, let me call and check out daddy. So when she called her daddy, she said, he ain't answered. She said, nah. She called and she clicked and whatever. She said, usually daddy answered that because, you know, he know I got to get my check from over there. So she called. She said, yeah. she said, come on. Let's go. She said, something's wrong. We get over there. The police got everything taped out. Her daddy is laying on the floor dead. We got there so fast, they hadn't even taken his body. They was taking it and uh, treating it as a crime scene. And by that time, the rest of the family got there. And if you never, ever heard a person, family, know that somebody's dead, it's a blood curling. I mean, oh, my God. It's a scream you'll never in your life forget. And the other leaders, two leaders, the other leader came. Their real name is Carmelita, and they're black. Their name is Carmelita. And, uh... The other leader, we call big leader, she got there, man, and she just screamed bloody murder. I'm talking about it just well, and it just sent chills through my body, you know. But I, I was trying to stay strong and try to keep the other one together. But, man, I ain't lying. I'm talking about crying and wailing and knowing somebody's body, your loved one's body is laying on the floor. Man, it's, it's, it's uh, uh. So, like I said, I've, I've talked. <laughs> I've spoken. <laughs> You know, hola, 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 Spanish. Yeah, I got that from Dora the Explorer. <laughs> My grandbaby watching Dora the Explorer. They all used to watch Dora the Explorer. But yeah, I've seen many people, seen them today, and, and they was dead. They was dead, man. Yeah, they was dead. Yeah. My mama just died. I was the 16, man, and, um, they allowed me to go to the mortuary, you know what I'm saying, and go downstairs, and they had a laying on the table, and I've had to recognize people, I've had to identify people before that was dead, and it's the one of the worst things in the world to do because to me you never get that face out of your mind. It always comes back. And that's the last thing I've seen of my mother. And then a lot of people come saying, Why didn't you want to go to the funeral home? That was it was dirty the way the funeral home was set up anyway, because it wasn't supposed to be a funeral, but eventually it was a funeral because it ended up being people there. So, you know, you do dirt, it comes back on you. So I really don't I'm not worrying about that. But I didn't want to see my mother ashes which my daughter has them so she has them so but I didn't want to sit there and looking at her arm but I did see my mother before she was cremated and um uh, I seen my daddy my daddy died at the house and I seen him uh uh the last uh, well, before they carried him out they unzipped the bag and they let me say bye don't do it. 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 Unless you got powerful family. You gotta have a lot of family. You gotta have a lot of uh uh you gotta be uh you gotta be up for it. You gotta be mentally and physically stable to see that. So it messed me up, so uh, I hated doing that. So I've seen my father and I've seen my mother in death. Not you know, not in the correct circumstances. Like I said, my father, before my father died, I heard him coughing. It's another story. But the point I'm making is, 
You can look at a person today and they could be gone tomorrow and not always tomorrow in a split second. So why you being evil and nasty to people that come into that job right there, MB? Yeah. Master Brand, yeah. You want to keep on being nasty to the people coming in there? You chasing people out trying to secure your job? Yeah. You know. Remember, that could be you. That could be your family member laying out on the ground. You could have killed that man to secure a job. And then at the end of the day, I don't know what God you serve, but the God I serve, he would condone. He would have something to say about me doing something like that, and he would do something about that. So... What does it prosper a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? Yeah. What does it prosper a man to gain the whole world, our woman, to gain this whole world and to lose your soul? And a lot of people, well, we won't know and we don't care nothing about it. I'm going to get mad you get yours because that's when you're dead, you're done. Well, you know what? I got a big old surprise for you. <laughs> did you know? Oh, you didn't know. You didn't know. You didn't know, did you? Ah, you don't know. Ah, somebody told you a lie. Somebody told y'all a big old fat, funky lie. Didn't they? They told you that you could get into this world, be born into this world, be in a test tube, be a test tube baby, whatever, be cloned, and you could be in this world, and you could do anything you big and bad enough to, not caring how you do it, kill people, rape people, uh, rob people, mm, do anything you want to the people. And you only really have to answer about it either to the police or you answer it uh, when you're dead. But you don't believe you're going that there's a heaven or hell, so you know, you don't care. But let me tell you this big old, big old, big old, big old, big old, big old secret. If you look in the Bible, you pick it up. I can't tell you exactly where it's at, but I'm quite sure you just look up sins of the father, <laughs> sins of the mother. Look, Just look it up. Get your concordance. Get your dictionary. You don't know how to do all of that. Talk into your phone and say sins of the father. Babble. It, it'll bring it up. Nine out of ten times it'll bring up gateway. What I'm talking about is this. God don't need to punish you after you're dead. That's a big, that's a fallacy. Man, that's an ugly, that's an ugly untruth. God, ooh. <laughs> you know how many whoopers I had? <laughs> Woo, don't get it twisted because I'm telling you what I know and what I experience. I'm not sitting here telling you some lullaby, some fairy tale, something I heard in a book, so or read in a book. Nah, uh-uh, baby. This ain't library material. This is life material. I'm telling you what I know. Man, oh, Lord Jesus. He told me to go right and I went left. Mm. Bump my head. Just like this situation, as a matter of fact. Let's go deep and let's t let me tell you how I got my little whippings. I love the Lord and, and I and I heed to his call and I want to be obedient. But let me tell you what I did. Because the car was down, I went and I ran and I took her, got me some groceries, ran and grabbed me the phone, in which I thought I liked the phone, really wasn't what I wanted, but it's all I could afford. So I got the phone from Metro, like I was telling you. So when I got the phone... I purchased the phone, end up, she lied and told me about that they didn't have a $30 plan no more, that I had to get a $40 plan, and she told me a whole lot of lies and stuff like that, so by the time I got home, I really, I called and I found out she was lying, so I wanted to take the phone back, so when I, my daughter arrived, arrived, uh, came over, I caught the bus there, when my daughter came over, she took me back in the car, and I told the chick that I wanted to exchange, she said, no, you can't get your money back, so anyway, I went through and fought all of that, so after I did all that fighting, 
turn around to help at this bank, which I'm going to tell you the name of the bank later on. Believe me, I'm going to tell you the name of the bank, but right now I'm in, in, in fighting this. And that's what I'm saying. I be fighting soup. You know, what the, where does this come from? Anyway, so what the helper did at the bank, she's going to wait 30 whole days later and decide because what I did was I switched my bank account. Because you went in and let people go into the bank account taking money that I worked hard for and I need. She took and went in the bank account and took the money back out that was supposed to, that had previously paid for the phone. So she, you know, basically, she, and it's called retaliation, which means she's vengeful. So to get back at me. So that's what she called. But she think of, <laughs> anyway, God don't like ugly and I don't like it neither. And I will pursue it. So... What? You know, your job's at stake, boo boo. Your job's at stake. Not my money, your job. Because God already told me how to handle the situation. But first, before He told me how to handle the situation, like I said, I was rushing. God said, take your time. Patience. Learn patience. He's been teaching me patience. I should have been patient. But now I'm rushing. All my cars down. Let me hurry up and do this. I shouldn't have been rushing. And that's where the devil gets busy when you rush. So I shouldn't have been rushing. So I, I hurt myself. With the phone in this situation with my money. So I had to pay $10 or stuff like that to send the phone back. Certified mail and get a signature to prove that I sent the phone back. And then I'm going to deal with the situation I got to deal with. But, like I was saying, is that she's doing evil. And God will punish you and he'll do things to you. Yeah, and he can do things to your kids. And also, I was reading up. You know, like I said, I get little things that come in my mail. And it's supposed to be like, if uh, you got questions. Where they try to answer stuff about the Bible. And he was saying something, and I forgot what he was talking about. Yeah, he made so uh, he's gonna answer a question. Somebody said, uh, why do God why do uh God uh is it God that harms people or something? And the person is supposed to be so sophisticated and so suave, which uh Brother Timothy, Reverend Timothy broke that down today saying don't trust people because somebody's coming back trying to tell you what to do. You only follow God. But he's gonna turn around and uh Oh, Lord, I'm losing my train of thought. But, uh, anyway, uh, you could be punished now. It don't have to be laid on. Your kids can get punished. That's called sins of the father. Things pass around from generation to generation for being obedient. Y'all got questions is the point I'm making. Anyway, he was on that time that, uh, he was answering the, answering the questions to somebody else talking about, uh, uh, why do bad things have basically what they're saying is is God is uh, why does uh, God is God allow why does God allow the devil to let bad things happen and then the person responded the little uh, you got you got questions responded by saying uh, uh, God the devil does this and the devil does that God's not, God's not in that and I'm like <laughs> I hurried up and uh, you know I'm waiting I read all the way down before I made my judgment and voiced my opinion. He sung to myself, and then I was going to put it online. And then I thought about it. Then I put it online. How are you going? I'm going to say the word. How in the hell are you going to say that God did, God is not in that? God kills people. Why, who, who are you to sugarcoat anything? If you believe in God, you believe that God created the heavens and the earth. That's what the Bible says. He created the heaven and the earth, and then he created man. He created all the sun and all the other things and the animals and dinosaurs and all that in it. If he created that, who are you to say, what are you saying? That the devil did some creation too? That's what you're saying when you say that God's not in there. God's in everything, and God will kill you, and God will take a life. If you continue to be disobedient to him, and if you harm some of his people that he don't want you to harm, and you do things he don't want you to do, he'll take your life like it's nothing. When he parted the sea, you stupid, ignorant fool. When he parted the sea and the Israelites walked through, when all them black people up are playing and stuff, <laughs> y'all know how we did. And you know the Israelites was black. So come on with it. You know, most people, all of them was black. They ain't going to be as close to the sun and not be black. No, they black, especially listening to the name, because y'all know we can name some people, can't we? <laughs> Ezra. <laughs> Hezekiah. <laughs> to this day, we still affiliated with our past. We are we are creation. And uh so anyway, when God parted the sea, 
It was God. It wasn't Jesus that poured it. See, it was God. With nobody talking about Jesus then. Hello. So, God, they were saying somebody was coming, but end up right at this point, it was Moses. So, anyway, the seeds parted. So, here we go. You know, some of us had that wild, had that Obama, <laughs> President Obama. Well, when he was president, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, had that little straw going through there. Look at this. Yeah. I was saying, we going out through with all our diamonds and all the gold and all the stuff like that. So, as they get to the other side, what happens? The sea closes up on the Pharaoh's men and they die. Who closed the sea up? Hmm, could it be the person that opened the sea up, that closed the sea? God knew that they was going through. What you think? God said, oh, no, nah, oh, wait a minute. Are they getting ready to come? Let me wait for the Pharaoh and them to go catch the Israelites who've been in slavery for all these years. Let me let them go catch them and beat them again. He killed them. Silence. Yeah, I can't hear you. So the point I'm making, and I'm not going to get deep because it'll throw me out. Because like I said, thank God I feel much better. Because my stomach, I had a knot in my stomach because I was trying to hold that in. So, you know, because I was like, people might take it wrong. I might hurt people's feelings, talking, you know what I'm saying? People get angry. But I'm like, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? The truth is the truth. And the truth shall set everybody free, including myself. But God will kill you. Jesus will kill you. He will kill you. Yes, he will. He has the power of life and he has the power of death. He will kill you. He will kill me. Believe that. I almost died a couple of times. I got the top of some, did some, something. <laughs> I did something. Yeah. He wasn't pleasing in his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it take my oldest daughter to tell y'all that one. <laughs> I used to eat pork rinds all the time. I was eating a pork rind. I swear to God, God is my witness. My daughter tell you, I'm talking on the phone to her and I'm eating pork rind. I used to eat them big old bags of pork rind. So I'm eating the pork rind and the shell of it locked, just dried up in my throat. I couldn't breathe. And then when I couldn't breathe, so help me, yeah. I, I, I never shared it with anybody. But I'm going to share it with you just to let you know that when I'm talking about people not speaking English and, and, and people not speaking Spanish and all this type of thing, I'm just telling you how real it is. When I could not breathe, my daughter tell you, she said, like, when she stayed down the phone, Mama, Mama, you need me to call the ambulance? What? I couldn't even say nothing. My wind was gone. It, it lodged out my breath. So I'm trying to breathe and I'm trying to clear my throat and I try to drink water and the water wouldn't even clear. And that's when God started speaking. I was drinking then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was drinking liquor then. I was drinking my beer. I was drinking my cold for fat. I didn't have no beer at the time. I'm thinking, was I sipping a beer then? Nah, I wasn't sipping a beer. I think I had just started getting sober. Yeah, because at one time I kind of, I, I stopped, I had relapsed. So I don't know if I was still drinking then or not, but that ain't why he got me. I ain't going to tell you why he got me, but... Anyway, I did something I shouldn't, inappropriate. I did something, you know, inappropriate. I, I, I touched one of his, 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 his ones, you know, and I'll tell you that much, you know. I ain't do nothing freaky to no child. It was an adult, you know, and it was his anointing. And I did, and I couldn't breathe. And he said, are you going to do what I told you to do? <laughs> well, I'm telling y'all. He said, are you going to do what I told you to do? said it like three times and I said, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't say yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Immediately clearing my throat and I could breathe. And I just coughed and just tears start pouring out my eyes because I couldn't breathe. My daughter said, Mama, can you breathe? And I said, yeah. <laughs> I just turned my boy. I was hoarse for like two days. I swear to God, I ain't lying. That's why I'm telling you. I ain't sitting there playing, man. I know God is real. I ain't talking about it. I could feel him. I tell you because he almost killed me. <laughs> I can laugh about it today, but yeah, he will kill you. <laughs> he will kill you, and he will kill me. Be don't be obedient and think, I, I, well, I'm gonna do what I want to do, and then I'm gonna die, and I'm down now. Nah, he can do whatever you do, and you do a whole lot of sinning, and you do a whole lot of dirt here. It'll be passed on to your kids, and the things you do in the people, it can come back on your children. People thinking them great escapes like that man Thor the Pollock or whatever, the Paddock or whatever, the little evil he did kill us. I just looked at the total. 59 people. I seen it this one. 59 lives. 400 something people because he had a machine gun. The banning guns don't have nothing to do with that. You got to check people, treat people right. 
I got a fairy his brother knows, and the girlfriend, they know why that man did it. But listening to it, I'm not a professor, but somebody did something to him, and it pissed him off, and he retaliated. The crowd was, the crowd, anyway, he used that crowd to, 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 to get revenge, just like this woman did with my bank account. People do revenge, do vengeful things, and they don't keep think about the consequences because they all caught up in it at the time, you know. But then when the stuff hits the fan, then it's like you're ready to say you're sorry and you regret it, and then it's too late because you can't take it back from what you did. And anyway, like I said, he can't take it back. He can't bring him 59 people. You killed damn, darn, oh, Lord, I'm a cub. You killed, you took 59 because you was angry because somebody did something to you and you took it out on other people. But you, I don't know if he has children or not, but you got family. And, and the brother was concerned about his kids. But yeah, you passing that down. Sometimes I've seen people do something to somebody and then turn around, it, it happens to them. You know. But the God that I serve, the God that I'm obedient to, when I don't even want to, and believe me, I don't want to. Don't ever get that twisted. I don't want to sit here and be talking to you about you not speaking English. Because for real, I wanted to say F you and F everybody on the job. Do you. And I'm going to go on about my business. That's what I really wanted to say. And that's what I really wanted to be about. Because I sit back and I look at people, some black people don't care nothing about themselves. They don't want to gather. Then the other morning, I'm listening. Usually I don't catch the news. Here it is, the radio, straight across early in the morning, 6 something in the morning talking about somebody just got killed. One person stabbed and another person shot. You know? And I, I'm listening to that. Black people. You know? I guess they was black. I don't know for real. But, you know, but black people dying. Somebody getting shot all the time. We're killing each other in the neighborhood. Shooting and putting fear in the neighborhood. Intimidation in the neighborhood. And then I look at it and I'm like Jonah. You know, Charles, <laughs> Dr. Charles Stanley, I don't know if he know me or what. God put it on his heart to put that out there. And it may have been, might have been for other people, but it did. I didn't realize I do have a Jonah spirit. I do have that spirit on me because I'm like him. You know, well, I, we go around here when you're trying to help people, you know. And I'm not saying I, I'm a, a prophet. I'm just saying what I'm saying. You know, take it any way you want to. But... Here it is, you run around here and you trying to tell people, you know, black people, man up. Get yourself together. Change. Look at the evil that's perpetrated on you. Come on, get right, get right, get right. And and they looking at you and they stabbing you in your back. They don't care nothing about you. You know, it's like you you like hot air. You know what I'm saying? It's just coming out of the balloon. They don't care. So if you don't care about yourself, why should I care? You know what I'm saying? That guy keeps saying, keep on talking, keep on talking. But I'm like, get it. You know, I'm like Jonah, but I ain't trying to go inside no. <laughs> oh, Lord, I got Sister Hilma. I've been listening to uh, a dude named Michael Kaya, the con comedian. And then I was listening to Monique, the comedian. So, you know, because I have to do things to make me laugh. Because my head was hurting so bad the other day. I ain't laughing. I thought my head was going to fall off. It was two days. I was like, oh, my God, I wanted to bang my head against the wall. But, uh. Yeah, like I said, I ain't trying to go in the well, so I, I do the best I can to be obedient. But when you got hurt, man, I, 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 I don't know. I, I wish somebody could walk in my shoes. Just to be, just, I just wish just for a minute. When, when somebody, when I tell somebody, like when I told dude, I said, yeah. I said, they doing this on a job. He said, on this one? Like, you know, what? every job you get on is problem. Dude, just like you feeling that, don't you think I'm feeling it? But now you ain't even in, you ain't spiritually fit to understand if you were spiritually fit and the type of person to really be in my life and to really be the type of person to have my back and to really be my people, you would have said, oh, wow, what they doing to you? How can I help you? You know, do you want to talk about it? You know what I'm saying? Do you need any help? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. What about that? What about that? Can you can you man up? Can you come come correct? Man up, woman up. Can you come to me like that? It don't matter what you're going through, what's going on. I got your back. Oh, man. Oh, where he at? Where he at? Where he at? That's what I want. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. 
real talk. You know what I'm saying? Ain't got to be no whole total sexual thing. But even if you're going to be my friend, come to me like that. Yeah, whatever going on. It's like my people. My people are like, cuz, what's up? What's up? You all right, cuz? I'm like, I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? I tell my people, like, what's up? You need me. It ain't what happened, what they do to you, what you do to somebody, what can did you do it, did you go do this? My people are like, what's up? Especially my cousin locked up. He don't even be asking, of course. They're like, cuz, I'm her. You know, but that's the type of friendships I like. I like people in my life like that. You know what I'm saying? I got your back no matter what. You know what I'm saying? How can I be of service to thee? Because that's how I am. Like I said, I don't know to do. <laughs> I don't know to do Greg at work for real. I just met him. He's the only one I know his name. I don't know the white guy's name, but I know they ride together and they cool. They roommates. You know what I'm saying? I think they roommates because I know one. Yeah, they got to be roommates. So I heard a con You know I hear hustle. <laughs> so, because I want her. That's what I'm saying. I don't care nothing about y'all. If somebody making plots or something like that, yeah, yeah. You got the wrong one to be with. Because uh, that's why I don't like no bad speaking languages that I don't understand. Because uh, I want to hear if I'm getting ready to set the bomb off. What? I hit. <laughs> that's why I'm like, nah, I want to know what you're saying. I want to know. I'm, I ain't, I'm not with that. You talking pig Latin and then cold. Nah, I'm not with that. Speak so I can understand what you're saying. You know. But like I said, you know, I don't know the man. I don't know him, but I know him. I know his skin is like mine. I know he that much about it. He's of me. And then what I share in common with the other white guy is that we both, we was about our money. We needed money. He's struggling. I'm struggling. We're trying to pay bills. We're trying to keep a roof over our head. I have that in common with him. Therefore, he is my concern too. You know, I care about him. It's not important about the color of his skin. I care about him. I'm not running around here and anybody intelligent. No, I'm not saying I hate white people. I'm not saying I hate anybody. I'm saying that regardless of who you are, I'm saying the people that did something to me, I'm going to call you out what you did to me. That's what I'm talking about. I don't care what color you are. You do without anybody aware. No, I said things about black people too. So it's not about being prejudiced. It's about just telling where I am and what you're doing and what you're doing is wrong. And what you did to that man. You harmed that man. You harmed both them men. You hurt them people's pocket. What that man get put out? I almost cuss, and pretty soon I am going to cuss, but I'm getting ready to get out of here before I really say something. Because, like I said, I'm just keeping them in my prayer. Because I dated a guy, you know. I put my business out there. I put my business. Like I tell you, I'm not going to sit here telling you something I don't know so you can sit back and, oh, she's just running on mouth talking. That man probably don't live in no halfway. What's a halfway house? Yeah, he lived in a halfway house, and I dated a guy that lived in a halfway house before. I dated him for a while. And he lived in a halfway house. And he had to pay rent of $75 a week. He shared the kitchen and whatever, whatever. But he was my friend. And he's still my friend. We just had a little disagreement. <laughs> we had a disagreement, a bad disagreement. But it's cool. I've seen it since then. We spoke. You know what I'm saying? We still speak and stuff like that. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? But he's my friend. You know what I'm saying? And, uh. You know, I was with him. He got put out of that. I was with him. He got put out of two of them because he didn't have the rent and a whole lot of other stuff he was doing. But he got put out, and he lived in one. At first, when he when I met him, he lived in there. They moved in some women, so it was two women that lived in the basement. Mm, how's that for trust? <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, I didn't have no trust for him. I just it wasn't my concern because I don't I didn't care at that time. Which to be honest, I'm still a, I'm a little bit of that now, you know. <laughs> I am that way all the way. Let me stop. <laughs> anyway, what you do? Long as you treat me fine, long as you 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 respect me and I respect you and we cool. What you got going on? I don't care if the women walk through the house naked. That's you. What what, what we got? It's about me and you right now. If you telling me you talking to me, that's cool. Me trying to run around and jumping in windows and peeping in windows and all that stuff, trying to see. My kid's daddy, like I said, though, he's 10 years older than me. My second kid's daddy. <laughs> Him. He taught me something, you know. That's what I hate about dating somebody old. And I don't suggest this. But anyway, he taught me something. He said, anytime 
You looking for something, you're going to see it. And he said, well, I said, what you mean by that? He said, if you're looking to see a person cheating, you're going to see it. He said, one time I went in a restaurant, and I, I had talked to my girl on the phone. She told me she wasn't going nowhere. So I happened to go to the club, and she said, no, and this guy got his arm around. So I'm like, immediately, I'm like, ah, oh, she's in the club with somebody else. And he said, I'm jumping to a conclusion. I'm ready to say something to her. He said, before I could, he said, my, uh, his brother friend, somebody said, hold up, man. He said, wait a minute. He said, yeah. She said, no. He said, man, now. He said, that dude right there, said, he's with that chick. He said, he just got his arm or his chick went to the bathroom or something. Hello. See? Mm-hmm. Would have been a whole lot of drama, a whole lot of somebody getting dead. <laughs> Over a misunderstanding. So be careful before you judge. And that's why I said when I'm speaking on you being evil for what you did to that man, I'm speaking on what I know, and that's evil. To sabotage, to make somebody's work wrong, to call a person out and to report draft snitch to other people what what somebody did wrong and to make it bigger than what it is. And nine out of ten times just plain out lie about it and think that that's going to prosper you. Woe be to you. Woe be to you. Woe be to you. No matter what color you are with that, you know. But like I said, I'm getting ready to get out for her. And getting back to the point, I said too, uh, I want to re-inuate, in you in I want to say it one more time. <laughs> what goes around comes around. And uh, God will kill you. God can't kill you. Jesus can't kill you. They are one in the same. They one in the same. Believe me, you, you, you do wrong. And I tell you what, I had a problem when uh, when uh, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I had a problem because I told you I'm an inquisitive child. And it, why he using me for something, I don't know. Because I asked for it. I said, God, if you God, you really God, speak to me. And he spoke. <laughs> but uh, I said, well, if there was really a God, I said, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, and the devil tempted him and asked him, said, throw yourself down. I said, why didn't Jesus throw himself down? I said, because his daddy's God. This is how I talk. I was drinking then, but <laughs> drinking or not, I always, my mom was, I always said, I, I, I used to ask my mama today, tomorrow. My, my mom be walking me, because she hurry up and give me to school. I miss that. I think kids should walk to school. School should, they should go to schools close to the house. Shouldn't be putting no little babies on no school buses and stuff. You know, but, uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, I said, well, uh, since Jesus was in the garden of the semi and the devil told him, said, throw yourself down, you know, and uh, I was like, why didn't, uh, why didn't Jesus throw himself down, you know, because he's God's son, he got all that power, he's a part of God, he wasn't going to do nothing to him, he'd float, whatever, you know what I'm saying, laying on the ground, get up, running, walk, or whatever. I think it was my cousin that told me, and he said, uh, something pertaining to, uh, yeah, he, uh, <clears throat> if you remember Jesus' reply, he said, do not, do not tempt the hand of God. You know what I'm saying? You don't tempt him. You know what I'm saying? You don't test him like that. You don't test him. Do not test him. And I was like, ah, that sounds easy. I think anybody would say that. But like I said, whoa, whoa. Like I said, I done lived a long time. I've lived a long time by God's grace and mercy. And uh, what I did discover is that what that means too is God's not your puppet. I'm his puppet. He's not man. I, 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 he wants me to be molded. He wants to mold me to be his puppet. So when he pulls my arm, my left arm, my left arm goes up. When he pulls my right, my right arm. When he tells me to speak, I speak. He, that's what he wants me to do. He wants me to be his puppet, you know. Where if, if Jesus would have jumped out of there, then that would have been him controlling God. Feel that? I didn't get it. It took me a minute to get it. Yeah, it's a control thing. Oh, you my father, you God. I'm going to jump out here. You know, you got it. Then we constantly would have kept doing things. But it was like he, like he said, Jesus, he knew what. He could have got away with it. But he's letting the devil know, now, nah, 
You ain't gonna run around telling people that, and you ain't gonna make me test my dad, because I don't know my daddy might let me file for a minute, you know what I'm saying, because that human side can still harm, be hurt, hurt, you know what I'm saying, but I'm not gonna test him like that, because he's not a guy that should, should be tested and can't be tested like that, you know what I'm saying, he do what he want to do when he want to do it, that's why I tell you, how this person gonna talk about God is not in control of evil things that happen in the world. God used to let babies die and all that. A lot of people don't talk about that in the Bible, but that's real talk. God kills babies. He kills children. He kills kings. He kills a lot of people. He tells people to kill people. Not jumping in people's heads, but back in the bad biblical days and in war, I'm quite sure. Make sure you get the person that you went over there for. You know what I'm saying? But, um, I mean, you know, be careful where you get information from. Pastor Wim says that all the time. That's one of the powerful things that ever come out of his mouth because I never had a few preachers really say that. You know, he always say, pick the Bible. Like I said, I really would love to carry my Bible and pull out my phone, but I'm kind of dingy because if I had my phone out, we'd have to turn it off today. My, I'm the type of person that gets so much out of my mind, the phone will go off and I say something crazy. You know what I'm saying? But I used to carry my Bibles, but my Bibles was expensive. I had an expensive Bible, and I lost it. And for then, I had a Bible, and it was engraved. As a matter of fact, when my purse got stolen, I had a Bible in there and it had it engraved. I went to Indiana and got it from the, the, the Christian store. And the bastard that stole my purse stole my Bible, never did return it. So from then on, you know, I never did really carry it. I don't like carrying a Bible because, you know, when I did carry it cheap, when I left it on the bench. So I'm not real responsible things. I used to do it with umbrellas, too, but... Anyway, what does it cost for a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Lose his soul. It don't gain you nothing. And don't test the hand of God because when you try to test the hand of God, you're saying that you're God and that God is your, your, your puppet. And God is not a puppet. And I, 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 I dare you. I double, 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 D dare you to call him your puppet. <laughs> I double dare you. Call God your puppet. Call God your puppet. Tell him he's going to do what you want him to do whenever you want him to do it and how you want him to do it. I'm waiting. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting right here. Go ahead and tell him. Go ahead and talk to him any kind of way. And one thing, <laughs> out of the billion of things that I love about God, he can speak every language. So there is no uh, miscommunication with him. So you can speak Spanish all day long and French, Swahili, whatever. You can speak it all, boo-boo. God knows what you're saying. Just like he know what you're saying, he know your heart and he know your intentions. And whoever did that to that man, their intentions was foul. I, I ain't lying, just pure evil. Pure evil. Pure evil. And what pissed me off about that? I stood there and I looked at you. I looked at you. When the chick that been in there for three years, she turned around and her paper was wrong because they brought the paper in the car back and the, the, the land leader looked at her paper because the chick's from wherever, Cuba, whatever, with her. You looked at her paper and you didn't open your mouth and say nothing except, oh, you messed up and you continue to send on the way. But then you turn around to the black man and tell him you're going to out at him. And then a man got to get rushed to the hospital. You evil, no good, dirty. You evil. I just pray that that man is all right. I just pray to God that man is all right. What does it cost for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? It's a commercial, one of my favorite commercials in the world. And I used to act it out when I was in school because it was fun. What would you do for a Klondike bar? I used to run up to people because I was like a class clown. I used to run up to people all the time. And I used to say that because it was a joke. What would you do? Because I used to see girls and, you know, trying to talk to little boys and stuff like that. They quiet for real, but they want to change cause, and to get freaky so they can get with a boy. So I used to always run up to different people and say, what would you do for a Klondike bar? You know what I'm saying? You'd be surprised, but it also would make you think, what would I do? Am I willing to start smoking? Because back then when I went to school, the big thing was to smoke cigarettes behind your parents' back. Drinking wasn't all of that and smoking weed wasn't all that important at that time because they had just started the busing out here. The big thing then was smoking cigarettes because at uh, the school I attended, 
The high school I attended, you could smoke. They had smoking herb reform because we were 15, 16, whatever. They were smoking cigarettes, so they had an herb and you could smoke. So that was a big thing. So even though, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, to fit in, you had a lot of people trying to fit in. I don't smoke, but I'm going to start smoking so I can hang with the cool people, just like in the fines today. So, uh, like I said, I feel so much better. So I got to get out here. I got to handle some more business, just a little bit more business, and uh, see if these people got this paper. You know, get this package back, and then if they didn't, then like I said, my car been stolen. Like I told them, so I'm still trying to see that. What what part did I play in that? You know, even though my car got stolen, you know what I'm saying? What was I supposed to do? I did. I was continually going to work. My son was taking me to. He got to the point so I oversleep, and then I couldn't miss no more days. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Why bad things keep happening to me? <laughs> nah, you know I used to say that and you know somebody bust me straight outside my head. You know what they told me? They said, why not? And you know who the smart aleck was that first said that to me, don't you? T.D. Jakes. I ain't lying. He said something crazy the other day. I gave it a, a bad mark because I was like, nah, I don't know. Uh, uh, it was today. Well, anyway, TDJ said that, you know, uh, uh, why do bad things happen to people because they do, and uh, like I said, you know, why bad things happen to me, why not, who am I that I, I can, uh, I, I, that I'm going to pass up, you know, uh, 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 life, <laughs> you know, the rain, it rains on the just and the unjust, so, you know, I, I'm not qualified to get out of anything, by no means, that's why I'm telling you, just like he could kill you, he could kill me, just like he punished you, he punished me. If I'm not obedient and do what he wants me to do. But like I said, I find it very difficult. And it's not so much other people against me. It's just dealing with it. It's things. Like, you know, I'm thank God for pastors. That's why, again, I keep thanking God for pastors. Please go to church. Please get around pastor. I thank God for the pastor because the pre and the preaching of the word because that helped me. Because it, it hit me where I was because it is the devil in my head. I, you know what I'm saying? You working this job because I can't figure out why am I hurt. God, why did you send me? Did you send me here? I did. I didn't misunderstand. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Was it a miscommunication? So I'm trying to figure out, you know what I'm saying? Because I know God tell me where I'm at. So like I said, I got to do some more praying, but I got to get out of here. I got to get this. But I thank God. God talked to me today. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I mean, real talk. And he was like, do this. Take her out of your business first. You know what I'm saying? Because I took off. He's like, take her everything you need to take her because the things I needed to do, I couldn't do because I, I don't get off working time. So, guys, like, get everything done. Get everything you can get it done. You know, so, if God willing, if he want me to go back to work tomorrow, then I will. I just, most important, the only thing on my mind, I just pray to God that, uh, that, that, that man, you know, is all right. Like I said, the other guy, I don't know if he came back. But like I said, they just, you know, he spoke about it. You know, you just doing things. One screw, one screw was wrong. One screw was wrong. On the cabinet, she took the whole cabinet apart to just unnecessary. And then the one chick I was talking to, she told me she can't speak English, but she told me she was 55 years old and said her mom and dad in her 40s of breast cancer. So she one thing she was saying too that was important. She was like, it don't matter about money, it's about your health. She said that, but then you try to sabotage me too. So you're a liar. Like I said, uh. Let's pray before we go out. You know, let's pray. Um, Lord Jesus, uh, I pray for the guy Greg. I pray that it's for his health. I pray for his medication, everything to kick in. I pray that he's all right. I pray that he's alive. I pray, Lord Jesus, that all the people that want to cause harm and to protect their jobs, no matter what color they are, Lord, I pray that you stop them. I pray that you stop them and intercede, Lord. I pray that you send somebody into their lives and let them realize, is the money worth killing somebody for? Is the money worth harming somebody for? You know, what if it was your family? Would you want somebody doing them the same way? So, Lord, at the end of the day, you know it's not my will that's going to be done. It's yours. All I, all I can do is just pray. And uh, I thank you, Father. I thank you. I thank you for your grace and your mercy for waking me up and starting me on my way. I thank you for the opportunity for the car to work, which the car has been working now. Hello. 
I thank you, God, for that. I thank you for the opportunities. I thank you for the conversations I had with people today, and they made me laugh. I, I thank God for humor. I thank God for a sense of humor, you know. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for making me wise. I thank you for making me conscious of my money decision. I thank you, God, for showing me and showing us when I'm spending, you know what I'm saying, with me anyway, my spending was out of order. Thank you, Lord, for letting me not be a habitual shopper anymore, an impulsive shopper anymore. Thank you, Lord, for letting me get what I need and not what I want. Thank you, Lord, for watching over my grandbabies and my children. Thank you, Lord, for no one calling my phone to give me a, a, a bad report. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you. Thank you. I know Mama's with you, Lord. I know my daddy's somewhere walking all around, wherever, you know. I thank you for a peace that you can give, that nobody can give and nobody can take away. I thank you, Lord, because my stomach was all up in knots today, and I was like, whoa. And I thank God that it's gone. It's gone. And um, can't nobody do me like you. Can't nobody love me like you love me. I remember when I didn't even love myself. You taught me how to love me. Thank you, Jesus. God bless all of you. Keep on rapping, my cousin Bo and his two kids been rapping. Keep on, keep your dream alive. No matter how old you get, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming, keep reaching. Keep reaching. Keep fighting for whatever you believe in. I heard about some little girl, uh, her parents, a uh, uh, military, whatever, and uh, she don't want to get up for the anthem. And I posted on there a lot of people talking about the anthem and what it really was standing for and things like that. You know, and so I'm like, whatever your fight is, and God puts on your heart to fight, fight it. Fight, 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 fight. You know. I'm going to end with this because I've been ending about five times, but it's something just hit my heart again. I mean, this is just me. This is 2017. Today is October the 11th, 2017. We are black people and we're still fighting and talking about slavery. Are y'all comprehending that? We're talking about slavery. At this time, there are injustices still imposed on us in 2017, and we have to still boycott and fight things like that. Are y'all waking up? Are y'all not aware of this? Are y'all listening? Are y'all looking at this? It's us. Yeah, the Mexicans and different people, some other nationalities, some other cultures and stuff like that. They have to fight. But the point is, we are the ones that still have to fight. I'm not even going deeper than that. I'm like, just let that man, are y'all really realizing that? We dealing with racism. Like I said, I got a neighbor next door racist. Are y'all feeling that? What is this? I mean, can you, wait, huh, let me take it back. We know what it is. But when I just, I'm looking and I just see it. When you look, and it's not just, I'm not talking about just looking and seeing or just the racist. I'm talking about opening my eyes and just seeing. Just seeing the truth. Like when I went to get my nails done, I noticed in the area. Now, it used to be a mixed neighborhood. You, you had your whites and blacks. Now the neighborhood is more culture in there. You got Asian. You have Asian stores. You have a lot of Asian businesses that's catering to different cultures. And you go down there, it's just like, I've been to New York before. Yeah, boo-boo. Been to New York. Yeah. And in New York, they got to play Chinatown. Where, where is our town? Where can you go where you see, I mean, please point me out so I can go to the black nail salon. You know what I'm saying? Where is the area, where is the zip code, where all the black people are? Where, where there's a nail salon, where there's a black-owned restaurant that sells chicken, that sells chili that sell greens, that sells fried fish, catfish, whiting, perch. Where is the black-owned restaurant that does that? Where is the black shoe store? Where is the black clothing store owned by 
black people? Where is the black convenience store? Where is the black gas station? Where is the black store that sells locks and and, and, and things like Lowe's and stuff like that. Where, where is that black business at? I think there was a McDonald's. I think the McDonald's, a couple of McDonald's in Louisville. Uh, I know some of them are owned by black. But where is the black telephone book? When we pick up the telephone book, how many pages are filled with black business owners? How many black people own businesses in Louisville, Kentucky? How many black people own businesses in Jeffersonville, Clarksville, and New Albany, Indiana? How many black people in Louisville, Kentucky own their own house? Right out, don't have to pay rent. Just pay taxes. How many black people own houses that they're buying? How many black people own their own cars, 2017 cars? How many black people own 2017 cars? The car that they really wanted, not a car that they had to get because of the income. How many black people in Louisville, Kentucky own Mercedes Benz? How many black people in Louisville, Kentucky own boats? How many black people in Louisville, Kentucky own Liquor stores. How many black people in Kentucky own clubs, dance clubs, bars, casinos, whatever you want to call it, lounges? How many black people own them? 